going to start off tonight with a poem called Time. Time and the march of army boots and metal chairs and the midnight howl of a panther train. Time and the sea lord calling back the herds and the seventh breaking of the hardwood stair. Time and a white coat, cigarettes and coffee. Time in the refrigerated cellular automotive facsimile liquid crystal satellite malfunction. Time and the lack of confidence reflected in faded cathedral glass. Time and aluminum eagle wings and the painted skydivers and the telescoping highways. Time and a minted piece and a pine cone rustle and a chipmunk's soul. Time because everyone's written a poem about heartbreak in an empty hotel room. Time and the concrete lines and telephone poles and the copper, copper saxophone strings. Time and the burning pages, the empty bottles, the distorted static music. Time and the black keys, white keys, gray keys, color keys, computer keys, car keys, house keys, major keys, minor keys. Time and the red ink and the black water. Time for a glass around your neck, under your feet and in your pocket. Time in a house without ceilings, a front lawn full of hands, and a basement full of feet and folded prayers. Time in a red paper kite, hunting through the stars shine. Thank you. That, um, that piece is in my book, Stretching the Window, which I have copies of tonight, if anyone's interested in doesn't already have a copy like I know many of you do. Damn good book. <laughs> Damn good book. Are you trademarked Adam? I should be. <laughs> so um, that piece was called Time, and there was a line in it um, about heartbreak in an empty hotel room. So this is a poem called Heartbreak in an Empty Hotel Room. Today, the morning broke from black to gray, just like every other morning on every other day in this town where the noontime scarecrows burn away all the hope by afternoon, along with the iron and a canvas of fumes. I heard the Duaros in the woods conferencing with fairies and howling, we only have two options, the slow crawl of the coward or the shotgun exit of the brave. A blue dove sat above my head, mocking me from an aspen limb because I mumbled about building roses while holding a rusty 11-year-old knife. And I've been holding that knife for 11 years just in case I need it again. Because you might see silver spiders falling across my face, but there's no magic in me. I'll never see Ezekiel's green-winged angels, and I'm afraid to break the silence of your stone. I want to be everywhere tonight. I want to eat dinner in an attic with your ex-girlfriend reading tarot cards and talking about anonymous movie theaters. I want to climb the windows of every downtown office, arms open up to the honey waiting on your fingers, to the golden eggs and the golden eyes and the golden halos kicking around your ankles. But mostly, mostly, I want to sit at the top of a cast iron spiral watching down because even when you're not around there talking about NPR and the Mayan calendar and the last of the American bison, why can't you see me? See me, drowning in the afternoon caldera of wildflower wine. There are no more time pieces pulling fleece from the irony of an ample blossom rain, the warp and the weft of a diamond riot. See me with the asphalt and quartz in my hair, under my palms cracked like the bell of an ivory horn, sounding the call of the vagabond messengers. See me falling to my knees because no one will hold me up anymore. You never learned how to bring your own sun, so how much brighter must I shine before you can see See me and tell me, when will you write a song for me about how brave and stupid I was on Good Friday, about how I scheduled a resurrection while the swallows and pigeons shot arrows across the unfiltered sky, about the clover above my head. I'm leaving tonight. I filled the back seat of my car with sleep and doorways, but no ceilings. I tucked Nike's crown under my arm, scratching psalms into copper collars and chasing blue lights down the highway, chasing my enemies, chasing every herald and beacon, and running with the army of blue-coated angels. Just see me. for a minute, and I want to read my angry poem. <laughs> 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 
Romeo discerned with a swampy eye. It's the nunnery for you, my dear. No surgical alterations or cupboards full of plastic knives. Yay! It's the nunnery for you, my dear. So I punched him in the front teeth. You saw the excuse for a used tea bag I retorted with salt rocks and chlorine. You couldn't hear hyenas gnawing at your boxer shorts. Or notice the black flies camping out in your nostrils, buildings having bonfires, roasting marshmallows. Can't you smell the marshmallows? Hopeless, hopeless. There's some news from the cookie jar, Mr. Five to Nine, solid tear online, remote potato salad tongues with a twist of hay. That's my change in a swollen fourth toe. Why don't you just run that sugary little tuxedo through the riding mower before I lose the coffee grounds and parakeets have their way with your polyester shiny oxfords on your way down the alfalfa shoot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do uh, a couple more pieces. Uh, these are both from my book, Stretching the Window. And um, this is Indigo Freight Train. Listen to the howl of the June bug sock hop, calling down the sparrows from their limousine stair. Somewhere in the cemetery, bulldog freight trains are crushing every adolescent ego in the way. Purple ladies rocking in their back porch gasoline, shooting at the kingfisher perforated clouds, baking paper brownies in a supernova microwave, sipping their dragon's blood and kicking over kings. Indigo, indigo, weeping for the blues men. Indigo, indigo, melting paper dolls, knocking at the front door, lions on the telephone, angels in the parlor chairs who wait to tell you lies, duplicating underground wolf pack whirlpools and climbing up the black and yellow sunshine glass. Maybe in the morning under seagull storm break. Maybe in the morning after shedding mountain skins. Maybe in the morning when the bullfrog choir sings. Maybe in the morning. Maybe in the morning. Maybe in the morning at the sanctuary door. And um, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna recite one last piece for you. This is. Uh, What's that? No, it's not go to go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do one last piece for you. This is uh, Out of the Desert. A liar and a cheater. Like a crayon painted road sign, melting waxy puddles through tomorrow afternoon. I never quite believed in men with wings. Big and great golden eagle wings growing from their shoulder blades. No, I never quite believed, although I said I did, because I always watched my brothers carrying the weather on their backs, past the blue welding lights, scouring the steam-loving cranes that burned and bled and cracked all the gunmetal nightlights, lifting iron ladders, girders crossed into star-shaped flowers, worshipping a dead and contrived second sun, and I said no, no. I painted neon pink and silver over all the attic drywall, Called it heaven, climbed those 18 stairs every afternoon at 4 o'clock, said my prayers. Almost, almost thought I heard the saints talking back. And then I stood on the crystal jukebox declaring in 40 different tongues like a knighted prophet in leather sandals and a corduroy tunic that, yes, I believe that men can grow glossy wings from their backs, crossing canyons and vaulting the rapids. I had to believe, but I never quite believed. And the doubt? I knew it. Chewing nest of carpenter vermin, drinking the ink out of prayer books and clipping black eyes to the curtains. They chased me from the cathedral, from the railroad, from the state house. They chased me from the school and from the grocery, from the park. They chased me to an old garage underneath an old factory. And there, without any fishtail testimonials or a porcelain faced audience, there I found a man with wings who showed me how to find my own auburn and burgundy feathered crossing lakes and vaulting the heroic moon I'd never met. And finally, finally, I believe. Thank you.